You know, when you think of an AI data center, you picture these massive buildings, right? Racks and racks of servers, specialized cooling, just this immense scale. So what if you could take all of that, shrink it down, and put it right on your desk? Well, that's not science fiction anymore. NVIDIA just announced what they're calling a genuine desktop AI supercomputer, and honestly, this could change everything. And let's be super clear here. This isn't just some clever marketing slogan they're throwing around. This is the core idea, the whole vision, putting truly world-class, heavy-duty computational power literally within arm's reach. And that simple concept, well, it represents a massive, massive leap forward. But that idea also brings up a huge question, right? What happens when the power to build the next generation of AI is no longer locked away in the cloud, something only the giant tech companies can really afford? What happens when that power is in the hands of millions of individual developers? That's what we're here to unpack. To really get how big a deal this is, we've got to take a quick look back. Because you see, the story of modern AI isn't just about clever algorithms and software. It's a story that's been written in silicon. Every single major breakthrough we've seen was directly unlocked by a new generation of hardware, a new level of raw computational muscle. Just look at this timeline. It shows a perfect partnership. It starts in 2006, when CUDA basically opened up GPUs for general purpose computing. Then, boom, 2012, AlexNet crushes computer vision, running on NVIDIA hardware. Fast forward to 2017, BERT totally changes how we do language models, all powered by the Volta architecture. And of course, 2022, ChatGPT arrives, running on Hopper. You see the pattern, right? Every huge leap in AI needs a huge leap in hardware. And the next leap? Well, that's Blackwell. So. All that brings us to the machine itself. The actual physical result of this new architecture is called the DGX Spark. This is the box. This is the workstation that takes all that insane data center power and crams it into a form factor for individual creators and developers. And this number, this is where it gets really mind bending. 200 billion. That's the size of the AI model parameters you can now run right at your desk. It means you can fine tune incredibly powerful models. We're talking sophisticated chatbots or complex code generators with up to 70 billion parameters without leaving your chair. These are tasks that until now meant renting incredibly expensive time on some massive cloud server. And this is where the real genius is. They made all that power practical. Forget about special wiring or dedicated cooling rooms. This thing runs off a standard wall outlet. But the real magic here is the flexibility. You can start a project on your desk, and if you realize you need even more scale, you can just link two systems together. Or, get this, you can push your entire workload up to the cloud without rewriting a single line of code. It's a totally seamless workflow, from your desk to the data center. So how on earth is all of this even possible in such a small box? Well, to figure that out, we need to go inside, right to the heart of the machine. And that's where we'll find this revolutionary new piece of silicon called the GB10 Superchip. The GB10 is what's known as a system on chip, or SOC for short. And you know, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It's an entire computer system. The CPU, the GPU, the memory, all squeezed together onto one single hyper-efficient piece of silicon. This integration is the absolute key to getting this kind of performance in such a small power sipping package. Now what's really cool is the GB10 isn't just an NVIDIA story. It's more like a super group collaboration. Think of it like this, NVIDIA brought the screaming lead guitar, their world-class high-performance GPU, and MediaTek brought the rock-solid rhythm section, their deep expertise in making ultra-power-efficient CPUs and memory systems. And the result? You get the best of both worlds, all living together on a single chip. And the specs here are just staggering. One petaflop of AI performance. I mean, that's a number that used to be reserved for giant server racks. But maybe the most impressive number on this entire slide, look at the power, 140 watts. That's less than what a lot of high-end gaming PCs draw, and yet it's powering a literal supercomputer. That's the kind of insane efficiency that makes all of this possible. But here's the real secret sauce that makes it all run so fast. Coherent unified memory. See, in most computers, the CPU and the GPU have their own separate little pools of memory, and they waste a ton of time and energy just passing data back and forth. It's like a terrible game of telephone. The GB1 just gets rid of that problem entirely. The CPU and GPU share one giant pool of memory. This not only removes a huge performance bottleneck, it also makes life so much simpler for the developers writing the code. Okay, so we've gone deep into the hardware, the specs, the history, the whole shebang. But now, let's pull it all back to the big picture. 
beyond all the numbers and the tech, why does any of this actually matter? Well, because this isn't just about one specific field. It's about accelerating the entire AI ecosystem. Think about researchers working on robotics or computer vision or data science. Think about developers building apps for edge devices. All of a sudden, their entire workflow, from just playing with an idea to actually fine-tuning a model, gets a massive speed boost. And ultimately, what this all comes down to is one core mission from NVIDIA, democratization. The goal is to take the elite, almost mythical power of their Blackwell Data Center GPUs and put it directly into the hands of millions of developers, researchers, and even students. You know, for decades, this kind of computing power was reserved for a tiny, select group of people at a handful of institutions. Now it's about to become a standard tool on millions of desks around the world. So the real question isn't just, what can this machine do? It's, when every single developer has a supercomputer at their fingertips, what new worlds are they going to build?